U.S. Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations. So, Jeff, prosecutors were recommending a six-month sentence. Bannon wanted probation. What do you think? Is this a win for the Justice Department? Well, it's not really a win for the Justice Department, Kira. I mean, it is, it seems to me, an irresponsibly soft, uh, weak sentence, given the, the willfulness of this contempt and the seriousness of it. I mean, the Department of Justice told the judge that Steve Bannon had flouted the law and flouted a subpoena. I don't know what the word flout means if it doesn't apply here. If you look in Webster's Dictionary, under the word flout, there is a picture of Steve Bannon. That is the level of contempt that he demonstrated for this process. Um, the maximum uh, prison time that he could have served under this uh, because of these two convictions was 24 months. He received four months. That's uh, one sixth of the maximum he could have served. And I'm concerned, frankly, that a sentence that is this weak uh, serves a terrible message uh, and, and impedes Congress in its attempt to try to get uh, its subpoenas enforced going forward. And now you have Bannon flouting that he will appeal. What do you foresee? Well, I guess he's claiming that he was prevented from putting on defenses. I don't know what those defenses would have been. I mean, non-temporary insanity. It's not clear at all uh, what it was that he was prevented from presenting to the to the uh, jury. It seems to me that he has no serious appeal. That isn't to say, however, that the judge uh, was wrong in permitting him to stay out of jail pending appeal, simply because if he did otherwise, if he ordered Bannon to jail now, that would effectively uh, nullify, practically speaking, the appeal. But I'm darned if I know what his appellate issues are, frankly. Well, his defense team has argued that uh, he didn't comply, and I'm I'm looking at it here because he didn't want to conflict with any executive privilege privilege claims from former President Trump. Does that hold any water? No, I mean he may as well have asserted that uh, he was uh, he was invoking the Bugs Bunny privilege. There is no executive privilege. Uh, it's a frivolous claim, and apparently, according to his attorney, his attorney never gave him that advice. So uh, if this is to be taken seriously, and, and it is to be taken seriously, I mean, Congress can't function if it can't investigate, and it can't investigate if it can't issue subpoenas, uh, and the subpoena process is meaningless if they're disregarded. So it seems to me that when you permit uh, people like Steve Bannon, and not because of his politics, his politics are totally irrelevant, to simply give uh, the middle finger, not to put too fine a point on it, to, to Congress, uh, and, and, and go off with a relatively weak sentence, a uh, $6,500 fine instead of the $200,000 fine that the Department of Justice uh, asked for. I mean, there are fender benders uh, that, that uh, in, involve, uh, you know, less uh, by way of restitution than that. So uh, I'm concerned about it. Uh, it's not a loss for the Department of Justice. It's not a slap on the wrist. But it's not, it seems to me, what it ought to be, given the gravity of what's occurred. Do you think that the investigating committee could really get things out of Bannon that would be worth their while? And if so, well, what's your gut? What, how good of a get would that actually be? Well, if you had somebody who were not a congenital liar, uh, then you would have the opportunity to get a lot of evidence out of Steve Bannon. And, and frankly, I, I don't mean to be harsh, but let's face it, uh, we all know who we're dealing with here. He isn't somebody who they just simply pulled off the street and decided to subpoena. He is somebody who indicated that he knew what was going to happen on January 6th, who told the country that they should wait to see what would happen on, on January 6th, and who evidently was involved in meetings that planned for January 6th. So there isn't much doubt that this was a targeted subpoena aimed at somebody who had evidence to give. The problem is, to, to your point, it's unlikely that he ever would have given it. Well, we're going to follow the tale of two subpoenas now because now President, uh, former President Trump has been uh, subpoenaed. Uh, he is, of course, he can't even find a lawyer to accept it. So uh, the saga continues, and Jeff will be talking a lot more. Have a great Friday, Jeff. You too, Kira.